part of what makes Siesta Mara unique is the place that we're where we are. It happens to be that here in the Mad River Valley, there's kind of this collection of architects that moved up here in the 70s and the 80s who were doing really innovative experimental architecture. And the school was born out of that. So this is the tree house. So this was designed, it's got this long ramp because it's designed to be handicapped accessible, which is kind of a unique thing that Yestermar has been connected with for the last 10 years, is building these universally accessible tree houses all over the country. People can come up here and like do yoga in the morning or just take a, take a nap on the hammock. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the quiet getaway space. And it works just like a yurt does where you have all these rafters and then you have to have something cinching around it, the bottom to make sure that they don't just all squeeze out. <laughs> that cable is very important. That's like a key structural element <laughs> to keep this from falling down. So you have all the rafters going out and that's basically like the equivalent of a collar tie in the traditional construction. This is what we call the timber frame cabin and this is a 10 by 12 cabin. It's traditional timber frame on the inside, so post and beam, you know, mortise and tenon joinery. This was built in a class about 10 years ago. This one has straw bale on the bottom as the insulating structure with the plaster on it, and then it's got cellulose insulation in the upper half. See a little wood stove. So this one we can use year-round um, and have people stay up here in the winter okay. if they're hardy. Over here you can see sleeping loft. There's mattress up there, sleeping yeah. bag. So it's the 10 by 12, 120 square feet. There's not one way to build a tiny house by any means, but definitely we, when, in our projects we try and incorporate some recycled materials. This is like a recycled materials door, so it's got a Pyrex pie plate and then an old bike tire and then some recycled foam and, and recycled wood. The class that's going on right now, so that's what they're building, is this timber frame structure. We focus a lot on really just help people learn the hands-on skills that they can go out and design and build their homes. And I think those hands-on skills are something that have really been lost in the last couple of generations. Short along short, is it in through the top? Yep. If you go back 100 or 200 years ago, most people knew how to use basic tools. They might not have been an expert, but they had to learn those skills to, to survive every day. And we've lost a lot of that. Those hands-on skills are really valuable and are very empowering when you start to learn how to actually put things together. This is what we call the straw bale cabin. So it's got straw bale walls on the bottom and just screened in on the top. So it's kind of silly in that the whole purpose of building with straw bales is that they're great insulators mm -hmm. and we're not really using them for that purpose here because it's a summer cabin with screens. <laughs> but it's a good demonstration project for our students to learn how to build with straw bales. We certainly work with a lot of different kinds of building materials, everything from traditional timber framing, post and beam construction, to some of the really alternative building materials, like this summer we're doing a class on building with hemp, which is made into a mixture called hempcrete. This is a demonstration project from a class called Fabric Formed Concrete, mm -hmm. and that's the idea is that you, instead of doing traditional concrete forms with wood or plywood, that in this case you use fabric as the form structure. And then when you pour the wet concrete in, it takes the shape of the fabric. So you get this kind of very organic, mattressy looking shape. Um, and you can do all kinds of interesting things with different types of fabric. We're pushing the edge with some things that might not be used on a commercial scale at this point. And I also think we're gonna come back to a lot of the traditional things that maybe have been lost over the years, traditional approaches to building. So yurts are from Mongolia and they're portable, so they're designed to be something that you can take down and move around and mm -hmm. put back up. So this is a 12 foot diameter yurt.
This is a, in a class that we do in a weekend, um, Yurt Design Build. So the students learn how to assemble all of the pieces and, you know, cut the, the walls. This is all can, natural canvas, cotton canvas roof and walls. And then a little plastic dome to help bring in some light. The name Yestermara really comes from the idea of combining the best of yesterday and the technology of tomorrow. This is our solar trailer and this is designed to be a mobile power generation unit. This is just kind of really basic two golf cart batteries and some old PV panels on a little trailer so you can take it anywhere. You could kind of do this for your tiny house too. I know, you know, one of the big issues about doing the tiny house on a trailer is you don't always know which side's going to be facing south because it's movable, right? And yeah. Depending on your lot or where you're moving in. So a lot of people have been doing separate, if they want to do PV and generate electricity, they would have that separate so that they can position it so that it's facing south. This is a solar hot water heater. So oh, this okay. is what heats the water in the shower, in the solar shower. And it's just the innards of an old hot water tank that we got out of the dump. And then in a box with this uh, foil faced foam and an old patio door that we got from the dump too. So a lot of recycled materials in this and it's basically just facing straight south and takes all the solar energy and kind of reflects it into the, the water that's in the tank and heats it up on a hot sun summer day. It'll get up to 120, 140 degrees, which is hotter than you want for your shower. Yeah. This is our composting toilet. We've been starting to think and talk a little bit about regenerative design as a concept. You know, the idea of regenerative design is really about how do we improve our habitat and the sites that we're living and building on through the development of the structures and the systems on them. This is a solar shower. The water comes from a spring right up the hill and it gravity feeds down into the solar water heater behind and then um, gets piped right in here into the shower and just kind of, you know, basic hot and cold. Um, but everyone seems to always like this one. It's got the zipper door. The solar shower is connected to these two constructed wetlands. One of the classes we teach is how to build constructed wetlands for wastewater treatment. And hopefully by the time it goes out the end, it's been fully filtered and clean and ready to go back into the groundwater. This was built as a cob class project. So cob is straw, clay, and sand mixed together. And then you put a lime exterior plaster over it to protect it. And you can see what happens when it's not plastered and it mm -hmm. kind of all that. This is what happens when it's not well protected and it gets rained on and mm -hmm. starts returning to the earth. <laughs> So this is our pine cabin. Right now, two of our interns are out here. They're putting on a new deck. Looks like you guys are almost done. Almost. Yeah. The, Just gotta do the railing? The, yeah, it's the temporary railing. People are moving in on Saturday, so deck is down. Deck is down. Looks great. Temporary railing. Building your own home can be more affordable than hiring someone to do it for you. So. We've got two bunk beds in here using some recycled materials, but it's very much open air, you know, screen windows, so it's summer only. We don't expect every student to be able to go home and do everything themselves, but they can also build a piece of furniture, install their own kitchen cabinets, build, a, you know, an entire house if they want to. There are lots of things that you can build yourself without having to have a structural engineer or an architect. You have to be aware that there are building codes and regulations that are different in every state and every city and town. But it really depends on the scale of the building. If you're building a skyscraper, you're probably going to need an engineer. But if you're building a garden shed in your backyard, you probably don't. This house we built in one of our two-week home design build classes, mm -hmm. so it's 10 by 20. I think that the interesting thing about this one is that we tried to use a lot of recycled materials mm -hmm. in it, so you can see the uh, roof trusses are all out of old wood that we took out of somebody's garage that they were taking down. We got some leftover SIP panels for the roof. Those are insulated foam panels that have plywood on either side. 
all the windows came out of one house with a door. We were, that was a, a great lucky find for us. But the reason that we call it the slate cabin, you can see on the outside, is mm -hmm. that it's slate roof shingles. Slate is typically more expensive, but it lasts a lot longer. So slate okay. roof will last 100 years. If you, have to, if you want to make a good long-term investment, put a slate roof on. One of the benefits to, of learning to build something for yourself is really that hands-on connection with the tangible pieces. Once you make that connection and have been part of the design and the building of it, you have so much more interest in that, not just passing interest, but like you're, you have a personal interest in that, the success of that thing. Whether it's a table you know, and it's you know becomes an heirloom piece that really has a lot of meaning because I made it myself and I understand the story behind it. Learning to build something for yourself it connects you then with the tangible pieces of your life.